What? Billie Eilish is the youngest breakout musical star since Lord, with the most mature voice and mentality about her work. She doesn't care what you think about it, and it doesn't bother her to speak her mind. So where does this confidence come from? And how did she become the fearless hit singer that she is today? Within only a few short years, Billie went from unknown to having millions upon millions of fans. That only held up because the girl is crazy talented. There's one side of Billie pre-fame that made her into the woman that you see today. Stay tuned as we take you through her life before she was famous and how she rose to the top of the crop. Before we take a look at the young music icon, make sure that you're subscribed to The Taco and hit the bell and be the first one to be notified. If you're a fan of our awesome content, check out the community section below and chat about all your favorite celebs, gossip, and much more. Thanks for tuning in here at The Taco. Now let's see the true Billie Eilish story and her rise to fame. Billie grew up like any normal kid, without knowing that one day people would be screaming her name. She grew up with idols and celebrities she looked up to, and now that she's in their place, she admits that it's quite weird. Turning 17 on December 18th of 2018, she has the whole world watching the exploration of her youth. We're certain you've already heard the story, but after the hit single Ocean Eyes was posted online for her dance teacher to hear, it took off by a totally unexpected fluke. Phineas, Billy's older brother, called her up to tell her that they had made it to 1,000 plays and that they had made it. But that number kept rising and rising. From that date, November 18th, 2016, Billy's world has changed. She's been rocking and rolling Hollywood ever since, releasing multiple songs with her brother and collaborating with some of the best. She's even got her own tour and was named Apple Music's Up Next Artist in September of 2017 after the release of her first EP called Don't Smile At Me. So how did this homeschool girl go from dance classes to being an onstage with millions of fans in only like a couple short years? What was her life like prior to the fateful posting of Ocean Eyes? In a blossoming artistic household, Billie grew up with her loving parents and her older brother Phineas. She was named Billie Eilish Pirate Baird O'Connell at birth, and we know exactly what you're thinking. You want a middle name like Pirate too. Billie's parents were both successful artists. Her family's roots were English, Irish, Scottish, and Belgian, but she was born in the heart of the entertainment world, Los Angeles. Her mother, Maggie Baird, is an actress, musician, and songwriter who you may recognize from various video games and small stints on television shows. Her father, Patrick O'Connell, is also an actor who acted alongside both his wife and his son in the successful 2013 indie drama, Life Inside Out. The film was a whole family affair, except for Billy, that is. But that didn't bother her one bit. She was focused on becoming a world-renowned dancer. Billy's first aspirations were centered around dance. She would be at the studio practicing for over 11 hours a week. The dance studio was called Revolution Dance Center, or RDC for short. Located in Montrose, California, which was Billy's hometown of Los Angeles, the city of angels that would one day swoop her into its arms. Billy mainly focused on contemporary dance, but practiced many other kinds, including aerial skills and one such performance with fellow dancer Simone Midby to Pink's song, Why Did I Ever Like You. It became a hit on YouTube after Billy's rise to fame, but her dreams of making a name as a dancer didn't last. Billy was just about to begin competing with her dance company when something tragic happened. She was severely severely injured and could no longer pursue dancing at the degree she wanted. Prior to her first competition, she suffered a series of injuries which included a strained groin, growth plate, and ankle. It took her out of the competition only days before she was supposed to go on stage. As heartbreaking as this sounds, Billie still continued to create what she felt was necessary, which included writing songs and making covers with her brother. In response to her dance injuries, Billie told V Magazine, My body is not a friend of dance, which is unfortunate, but it gave me a lot of time to do other things, which has been both good and terrible. Growing up, Billie with her brother too joined the Los Angeles Children's Choir at around 8 years old, which taught her how to use her voice properly without hurting it. Billie wrote her first lyrics at the young age of 11 and continued writing since then. A true budding artist continuously practiced her skills. Both Phineas and Billy were homeschooled, and it didn't stop Billy from being open and social, despite her famously not liking it when people smile at her. 
She developed her own sense of style and had close friends. It also helped develop a strong bond between her and her brother, which would later play into the success as you already know. Despite her craving to be a dancer, Billie did attempt acting. However, after a bad audition, she decided that acting wasn't for her and she didn't want it anymore. This was the end of Billie's short-lived acting saga, but far from the end of her musical endeavors. Her mother taught songwriting classes and had Billy and Phineas attend them, which they gladly participated in. This became a big part of the siblings' life. They were to dive deep into books and shows and find good hooks, names and phrases for all of their music. Billy and Phineas wrote handfuls of songs, which would later come in handy. Billy later told Harper's Bazaar that the first real song that she wrote was actually about zombies, inspired by her favorite TV show at the time, The Walking Dead. Do you know which song it is? It's called Fingers Crossed, and you can listen to it on SoundCloud and YouTube. Billie also told Teen Vogue that her father would make mixtapes filled with songs from the Beatles to Avril Lavigne, and so they learned each type of music from these eclectic mixtapes. Obviously, at a young age, Billie was fully supported in her endeavors by her family, a luxury not all artists are afforded. Billie also had a thing for horror, and quite frankly still does. Perhaps that's why her first real song was about zombies. Billie's favorite horror film is called The Babadook, an indie horror film from Australia that will scare your socks off and keep you up for a week. So it makes sense that her favorite TV shows are American Horror Story and, as previously mentioned, The Walking Dead. Billie's love for horror seems to come through in her eerie and dark lyrics. In her music video for her major hit, Bellyache, she plays a psychopath that she's just murdered all of her friends. And in the song Watch, she sings about burning someone's car. Harper's Bazaar has put it eloquently by saying that she doesn't play the innocent teen pop star that we've seen so much in the past, like Britney Spears or Miley Cyrus did. She's honest about who she is. And as Bazaar writes, the message is clear. Eilish is not your cookie cutter pop star. And it seems that even before she was famous, she was the exact same way. Confident, ballsy, baggy pants style, and of course, loving horror. Meanwhile, Phineas has grown into a fledgling West Coast artist. Not only was he prolifically writing music on his own time, but he was also landing roles on such hit series as Glee, playing Alistair in 2015, and his first acting gig, however, was in 2011, opposite megastar Cameron Diaz in Bad Teacher, playing the role of Spencer. Not a bad way to start off your acting career in Hollywood. When Billy injured herself, her and her brother had already been posting covers on YouTube. Often, Phineas would be on the piano and Billy would sing. Phineas also got the bug to begin making his own music from scratch, and began playing around with production software, which is a major point to note in Billy's rise to fame. Phineas is the lead singer and songwriter for the band The Slightlies in LA, and when a song wasn't working with his band, he tried out on Billy, which is exactly what happened with the hit Ocean Eyes that changed her life. Soon as she sang it, he knew it was going to work, and they decided to record it. With Phineas on his production software, thank goodness he took that up. Without her brother's innate skills at production, Ocean Eyes would never be a hit today. In November of 2018, Vanity Fair interviewed Billy for the second time, exactly one year apart, and posted the videos beside one another to show the growth of the star in one year. The statistics themselves are astonishing, but her joy is what is endearing. Billy has said, and we quote, I hate smiling. It makes me feel weak and powerless and small. I always have been like that. I don't smile in pictures. She continues by saying, But you know how when you're walking down the street and somebody smiles at you, you're forced to smile back? That's the polite response. It's like you have no control over it. Billy has always claimed that she's had, as they call it, a resting bitch face. But that doesn't mean that she doesn't like or that she isn't sad. It just is how she is because, as she says, she doesn't want to smile. This has nothing to do with her childhood. Billy grew up in a happy, creative family, which is the exact reasons that she's going to last in this industry. Billy's already aware of the influence she has on the outside world and especially young people looking up to her. In true Billy fashion, she took to Twitter in September 2017 to send a message about drugs in her own way. The tweet read, Damn, my old friends are getting fugly as hell. Drugs make you fugly sending the message to her young fans not to do drugs. She may be brash and outspoken, but she is grounded and backed up by all her pre-fame experiences to pave a safe path for herself. So Billy and Phineas decided to send Ocean Eyes to Billy's choreographer in hopes she could incorporate it into a dance. Instead, the song, as I mentioned, blew up. Billy had posted it as a downloadable link so her teacher could get it offline. As for the rest, 
Well, you know what happened. Though Billy's rise to fame was steady and appears relatively easily, she still had her struggles and even wonders if she misses pre-fame life. In the Vanity Fair interview, Billy hears herself say that she sometimes gets recognized. Now, in 2018, Every time I go anywhere, hands down. When she saw old footage of herself and she said, I'm kind of jealous of Billy a year ago. Maybe it isn't all it's cracked up to be. Either way, Billy is going to use her fame for the best. And one of the ways she's doing this is being open about her struggles with mental health and Tourette's syndrome. Billy has been outspoken about her struggles with depression and anxiety. Her and Khalid, who also has been open about these issues, decided to explore a mental health through a haunting song, Lovely. It was on season two soundtrack for 13 Reasons Why and did well on Billboard Hot 100. The two sing about being trapped in their own minds and seeking inner peace. Billy has also became the face for Tourette's syndrome, a disorder that is vastly understood. But being Billy, she opened up to the world about suffering and living with this disorder, which is described as a tick disorder, with repeated, sudden, rapid, non-rhythmic muscle movements, including sounds or vocalizations. Billy only has it manifest in physical ways and says that it's not super noticeable to others. Unless you're paying attention, Billy held off sharing about her disorder because she didn't want fans to only see Tourette's syndrome and not see her. Still, we don't think that Billy is sold on the fame. She says to Tidal, I hate it, but it's great. However, even with those thoughts, she's quite wise about the pressures of the industry. When asked about that, she says, I don't know if it's pressure. I think I'm learning more and more. It's obvious you can't please everyone. Like, never in a million years will you be able to make everyone happy. Billy opens up about her struggles and her finding adjusting to new life. Since her success, she says she has lost a lot of people. She says that people don't understand what she's doing is her job. She explains, when I hang out with people I haven't seen in a while, I say the things that are going on in my life and people think I'm bragging. I'm not bragging, I'm just telling you about my life. She explains to Tidal that it's still hard work, but in other great news, she got to meet one of her idols, Tyler the Creator. She first started listening to his work when she heard Goblin, and it blew her mind how unique it was. Billy is also an advocate for family and says that they're the most important thing. She may just be jet setting around the globe, but she still keeps her family close. At the time of the interview, her mother was on tour with her and her dad and brother were going to join for the US portion. And we love that. The funny thing about all this is that she doesn't feel pressure and she doesn't get nervous. Seems like she's doing the job right. She said, I either get really excited or I just don't want to do something. It's great because it's validating. I'm trying to learn to live up to it, I guess. Now Billy is soared to worldwide fame, but she keeps her strong values with her. Vegan. She always writes with her brother and he always produces her music. She finds inspiration everywhere and her own experiences don't limit her music. She may be young, but she's wiser than a lot of working artists who believe that they must suffer for work. And perhaps that's true for them. But Billy has seemingly found a more simple way. Describing her music, she says, when I write, I try to become different characters. You can write a song about being in love with someone, but you don't have to be in love with anyone. Becoming a character can really be fun. To put yourself in a place you had never have really been. Billy is open and honest, and that's why we love her. She's got millions of followers signed with her top tier record company, views pop as boring at times, and sees a future of much more to come. She's a girl living outside the box, and she refuses to go back into it. Maybe that's why this teen is so inspiring to us all, to be ourselves and intimidating us while we're at it with her crazy cool swag. She's on Forbes 2019 30 under 30 list for music, has chart topping songs, and still stays grounded. But she's still the teenager deep down, which makes her relatable as ever. Even through her serious vibes and haunting music, Billy cried over missing out on moshing and festivals because of her tour dates, which makes us remember she really is a teen who has more success than most artists so young. The articles may be endless and the songs may be replayable forever, but the girl is human and like us all, as she tweeted, literally nothing matters. We're all gonna die. We're going to take that as a positive to follow in Billy's footsteps and follow your genes, because why not? Billy gets it and wants to write all her own music with her brother. And seeing as family is first for this young lady, we're certain that she couldn't be happier. Billy has proved herself a wealth of times in just a short time. She's reached her height of success.
but she's also not stopping anytime soon. Billy is motivated to continue making music for her fans. She's a girl who's got it all, and we can't wait to see what the future will bring for Billie Eilish. What shocked you the most about the young, talented star before she was famous? Do you think she's too young to handle it? Or will she navigate the industry with ease and class? Sound off in the comment section below. Subscribe to The Taco and make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Over and out, Eilish fans.